Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Naka, naka baba shop kake. No, I, I don't have electricity. Manjenza, even tea yapa, nzo shoka mapepa kupanga tea. And the saying, haka inde has failed. Manjenza, nishiba haka inde wana kupasako something pakata pa. Kutu ya mba wasa pota foti. Let us agree as a country and as citizens. President aga kangiyo wa nisha kangiyo wa. Let us know that waga chipasako ka stamping ya mtumba, then we start supporting a person who has failed. We start supporting a failure. We are not going to make progress as a country. Let us call a spade a spade. Let us call President Haka Ende Ichirema the failure that he is because he has failed. Mwivera wa pauja. I hope mwivera kwa mwenye mwrele ugade nuru. Bruce Rusaka. We treat maize as a business. I agree with that concept. However, Ruchi, if you allow me, I want to break down the issue of the you know high uh, uh, cost of production of meal. Most people think that uh, the meal prices in 2023, 2022 have gone up because of the issue of maize. No, it's not. And even government thinks like that. That is why every time people cried about high meal prices, uh, Mutoro Piri and the uh, Hamweza at the FRI would announce to say, no, we've ordered uh, 100,000 metric tons of maize to mitigate high meal prices. That does not help because the reason minimum prices are high is because of the high cost of production. You understand? The high cost of production. When you increase fuel prices, minimum is a bulk commodity. Minimum is like cement. So you find that the cost in minimum, the cost of the actual ingredients is accounting for less than 70%. More than 30% is transportation cost. The cost of moving maize from Kamena Guri Sakuri to the milling company, the cost of transporting that mill mill once it has been packaged to the various distribution points. That is the big, uh, a very significant cost in minimum production. And why did that cost of production go up? Two things. Number one, President Hagaende Hichirema has misread the uh, policy to review fuel prices on a monthly basis. That was number one reason. Number two, road shedding. President Hagaende Ishirema has misguided policy of exporting electricity when we did not have adequate electricity here in Zambia. So now, when you look at a milling plant, you realize that the machinery they use there, the Gao Vija industrial level, they can't work on gensets. If, you're going, if they are going to work on gensets, you need very heavy duty gensets. So when we are prolonged road shedding, a lot of uh, millers had a backlog in terms of meeting their uh, orders. You know, they, they had a lot of backlogs. Most of the millers, I'd say more than 50%, I'm saying this from a professional point of view because most of these companies are my clients at my audit firm. More than half of them decided not to resort to alternative energy like gensets. They decided to shut down their milling plants until power stabilized. That is where the deficit of minimum is actually coming from. Because of that backlog that was created during the time of road shedding. You don't think it's coming from people who are trying to smuggle? Minimum? Smuggle, that is a useless story okay. by UPN uh, members trying to uh, mask the incompetence of their president. Let's go up in the HDM for what he is. Yeah. He is a failure. Oh, yeah. I have uh, even member of parliament for Shivamando on the line. Uh, Honorable Kapiong, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Ruth, and uh, good morning, uh, comrade uh, uh, President. Uh, yes, sir, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, and I hope you get a uh, wonderful Easter. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, um, Ruth, I think um, my comrade there has been uh, breaking down the information uh, very, very well. Uh, but you also wish to, you wish to recall that um, from last year, the session of last year, the, 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 and the session of this year, we have had issues with the Minister of Agriculture. And you see, when we are advising our colleagues, because they, they think it's politically all the time, there comes a time when we all should think of uh, our people 
as leaders. And so when we are lamenting, it's not always just for politicking. We came out of government. And um, this issue of brain game, or it's taken on anywhere. We told the Honorable Minister of Agriculture last year, when he was bragging that we are going to open the border and we are going to continue to the Congo market has always been there. All the time we were in government, the Congo market has always been there. And we have been supplying the drill and milling it. But we have not had any, we didn't have any, any time when people started drilling out for milling it. Why? Because they were, they were planning and there was proper management. We told our colleague, the Minister of uh, Agriculture, that before you start exporting, you have not produced anything as, as you don't govern it in terms of pain. That would say, oh, we have got so many metric tons of meal that we have produced in order for us to start supplying. What they were using is the stocks they inherited. And we told him, first of all, you sit down and analyze how much uh, food that we need for our people before you open the, the, the borders. Now you open the borders and everyone is free for all. Who will take food from with their own house with children uh, family? and it takes to the next door neighbor for those to eat and then only to jump into another neighbor the following day and say what kind of thinking is that? Uh, one of them told the comes when he's a member of parliament for Chipata Central he should have known we have always the, 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 between Malawi and Zambia when they have got surplus on the other side it, the, 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 the people from, from our side get to benefit from that and it, 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 on the super of basis, it's the same. So what, what this crisis we are seeing is just lack of planning from our colleagues in the executive. Yeah. When we read our brother from the comments, uh, comments minister saying, oh, PF was, uh, was to, uh, deploying independence to, to the borders uh, to fight smuggling, as we are not going to do that, we said, okay, let's wait and see. So let's we we, we 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 hope and pray because this year um let's show you. this year we expect that the, the harvest won't be that much to um, to, to, to to guarantee food security so it's 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 now that people should sit and plan you can't export and say you are going to export to you again what kind of thinking is that the chaotic supply of inputs, we kept lamenting in Parliament throughout the crisis. They did listen. They don't were just uh, political. Here we are today. Because as a result of that chaotic distribution of inputs, we are not going to have sufficient harvest this season. We are already in a crisis. So, do you start today, you know, it's fearful. You are wasting time. You are in charge. People need food. People need affordable food. So don't start politicking. Move your minister. The minister of agriculture now and then, including get down and wake up. They're not going to wait. Yeah. Uh, so I thought I could uh, just make that contribution because this guy needs leadership. And those that are sitting home affairs, defense, get on the ground to control those of your cadres who are, who are, who are overwhelming the security officers. Uh, as they are doing smuggling. Mm -hmm. We need to provide leadership because people are being mentioned, senior leaders are being mentioned of being involved in smuggling. It has been there all the time. So if you don't provide leadership, it's just going to be chaos. Mm -hmm. And in Sala, Kapundo, Sovalanda, in Sala, Kayangasha, I want to be Sala, Kayangasha, I want to be Sala, Kayangasha, I want to be So do the right thing now. Minister, uh, former Minister of uh, Home Affairs, uh, current Member of Parliament for Shivanand, uh, Stephen Campiambo, thank you very much. Uh, do you want to comment in on any of the points that he made? Yeah, um, I think he has just re echoed uh, pretty much what we've been uh, talking about. Uh, the issue of uh, this shortage is just uh, total lack of planning, and uh, it's a situation whereby uh, you know, President Arendi Chirema had some ideas in terms of uh, opening up the borders, increasing on exports, ABCD. That is theory. 
before you implement such an idea on a grand scale, you need to first analyze it. You need to add up the numbers. How much is our consumption? How much do we have in terms of stocks? And then if you have excess, yes, you can export. But not just one ton only exporting. I mean, that's total failure of leadership. And we're not talking about the luxury good here. We're not talking about uh, cooking oil at one to Raza, 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 you know, Raza Tuan Shara. No, seeking a food, a rika, a kundi, or we're talking about a key commodity, mini meal. You understand? And you can't, you, you can't do experiments with something as important as mini meal. You can't. What kind of a leader is that? That is why, from our standpoint, we share in the sentiments of the other five callers that President Haka and the should do consider resigning immediately because he has totally failed. The Zambian people believed in him, they gave him 2.8 million votes, but how has he repaid that? With hunger and misery, with shortage of minimum, you know. So he's a very ungrateful, uh, you know, president, and uh, he will go in the history of Zambia as the worst president ever. 2 hello, good morning. Hello, Mr. Good morning, boss. What's your name? This is Mlanga, the voice of Rwapula. Do you feel we know what kind of information? What do you feel we know? I can't even see the match. I can't even see the match. But soon, tempo, we must do. 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 Otherwise, Ngamulera <laughs> convention Eh? Thank you, thank you. Um, thank, thank you, Ramalenka. Um, two to six eight four one zero nine seven eight eight nine five eight nine five. Hello, good morning. Okay, sir. What's your name? Daniel. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, good morning, Mr. Good morning, Mr. Daniel. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shumtembo. I don't think the issue of me can guarantee the president to lie. I think it's it, it, a person who to resign. It's you to run from the political arena because you have been getting very well. So the issue of many more, and you are saying that a certain name is over the country. I don't think so. Because we are all, we are all in this country and we are all in the country of the certain name. That's not the truth. Because the certain name is just a little bit better. And they don't have a problem which is causing this. They don't have a slapping. People are slapping in the world just for the only motorcycles in the country. So I think if you are joining Zambia, what should you look for him to work on the limits of agriculture to make sure that this is not the order so that these people will stop smuggling the money. 
Thank you very much. Uh, let me add another call. Let's join this line. 2684 um, If you'd like to get in touch uh, with us. Hello, good morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Richard. Morning, sir. What's your name? Uh, I'm from Good morning, Mr. No. I'm quiet. Otherwise, we'll tell you I'm body at each over here. That <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Prominent. No. Uh, I have one last one and then I'll let you respond. 226841097889585. Hello, good morning. Morning. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. It's Mr. Arnold. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Arnold. Sure. I just need to borrow a song for PK. Come on, man.
Thank you. All right. Let's. Do you want to get to uh, some responses here? Yeah. 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 I think uh, um, the people are basically here yeah, according to what uh, uh, we've been talking about. Uh, you know, the, the the cost of living is too high on the ground, and any person who tries to call and say, "No, things are okay. Things are what what," I think they are not being truthful to themselves. I think uh, that is uh, something that is well documented across. And uh, you know, when you look at uh, the points of failure of uh, President Haga and it uh, transcends beyond the issue of minimal even in terms of uh, issues of fighting corruption. We have seen that uh, um, when someone acts as a whistleblower, the way Mr. Mnazuru, uh, Honorable Mnazuru did, they are immediately persecuted, they are immediately arrested. But the person is a whistleblower. He's saying that uh, I've got information about uh, corruption involving those two ministers. What a proper president is supposed to do is uh, to launch an investigation. You know, inform uh, the SEC. You need to be careful before you, you enter into contempt areas. No, no, no. Yeah. There's no contempt. Oh, I mean, the issue is in court. Yeah, I so I think you should just, let's just leave that. Well, there. I'm the one talking. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the, the one, one who ends up in court. I'm, I'm the, the one, I also end up in court. Trust me, I've been there before. As so as I'd rather you don't end up there. Okay, we're talking about <laughs> the issues of corruption. Yeah. Right? And the issue of persecuting Honorable Mazuru in his capacity as a whistleblower. You understand? Mm. You can't fight corruption if you are fighting those people who are reporting corruption. We've had similar incidents in the past under the previous administration where a whistleblower went and reported uh, Honorable Chief uh, 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 and the Honorable uh, Ronald Stotela. You know what happened in the previous administration? Mm. President uh, Lungu allowed law enforcement to investigate those two ministers and then give those two ministers an opportunity to prove their innocence in court. That is what a proper president is supposed to do. You understand? As a president, you are not supposed to uh, gag people who are complaining about uh, alleged corruption among your ministers. The way President Agarine uh, behaved, whereby he warned Mnazuru even before he was arrested and said, no, Munazuru uh, is mischievous. I've uh, uh, instructed my two ministers to sue him. And then soon on is that. You understand? So we have a corrupt um, uh, president who is presiding over a corrupt government uh, made up of corrupt ministers. And they're just on a gravy train right now. They're on a gravy train. They want to milk as much as possible from Zambia as a country, while the rest of the population literally suffers. Well, we eat our fingers because of hunger, because of lack of minimum. They are on a gravity train. So, whether you talk about failure of management in terms of um, the minimum issue, you talk about failure of fighting corruption, and, uh, uh, Richie, I want to emphasize that uh, the issue of harassing Munia was not the first issue where someone who reported possible corruption was harassed. Even that young man who reported the uh, uh, seeing uh, uh, Foreign Affairs Minister Stephen Kago uh, with a briefcase uh, after visiting uh, uh, some local investor was harassed. And Hatha uh, Indichirama was very quick to announce uh, uh, and defend uh, 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 Kakuro. And what uh, Hakai Nishirema said, to quote him verbatim, he said that I've phoned uh, Kakuro and asked him if he has received any bribe. And he told me he hasn't. And I believe him. That is a joke. That's a joke. What kind of president behaves like that? What President Hakai Nishirema was supposed to do was, okay, I've seen the complaints going around and I've, uh, I'll allow law enforcement, SEC and DEC to investigate the matter. Then after SEC and DEC, they investigate, they come out and say, ah, no, we've investigated, we did not detect any corruption. That is when President Hakai Nishirema is now supposed to comment and say, oh, I'm happy that law enforcement has cleared my ministers. 
Not that you know I called him to ask him whether he got a bribe and he told me that he hasn't got any a bribe. Which minister would tell their appointing authority that uh, Mr. President I got a bribe, yes. That's a joke. So the way President Arendi HDM is managing the affairs of this country is a total joke. That is the other reason why he needs to resign. Because we can't tolerate having him around, having a joke around for three more years. Okay. Let me take one last call. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Morning. Morning. Morning, sir. What's your name? Yes, sir. Sam. Sam, go ahead, Sam. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Um, I, I think, uh, to be honest, Baluchi, if you go around or maybe around the town, you see stability in the eyes of the people. Because I know what poverty is. I know what poverty is. We just as unscrupulous businessmen, we are greedy. We just have Greek businessmen, Mam Kukulu, Mami Vivian Stella, Mahan Gabati, those are the people. That's not smuggling. They are trying to kill this economy. Because if indeed they had the heart for Zambia, how can they go out there and begin to smuggle? If they had the heart for this country, then they smuggle for that of this country. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. All right. Do you want to respond to Sam? Sam touches on unscrupulous business, the estates, one or two mistakes, uh, some things haven't come to fruition. Uh, is there anything you want to respond to? Uh, well, uh, I don't think there was much worth responding to, but uh, I want to um, just to re-echo my area uh, position in terms of uh, the points of failure uh, with regard to the current administration. Um, you know, even when you look at the issue of the rule of law, We've seen an upsurge in cadalism, an upsurge in political violence, and uh, an upsurge in the use of the police to harass political opponents. For instance, when you look at the issue of uh, uh, the recent arrest of uh, uh, Dr. Fred Membe, and uh, he was arrested for an awful discharge of a firearm in the air, and uh, uh, there is some propaganda by UPND where they are saying no, they shot someone. But when you look at the person they are saying he was shot, 
uh, his room is got about 10 stitches what kind of uh, bullet uh, uh, <laughs> leaves an open wound which requires stitches there's no such uh, uh, gunshot wound so you can see this is propaganda and uh, it's uh, being motivated by no one other than the president himself because no one like i said earlier has the power in terms of the governance hierarchy of this country no one has the power to direct the police to do anything illegal other than the president himself you understand and also they are saying now dr fredman they assorted eight cadres when you look at the size of dr fredman he does he look like someone who can assort uh, cadres eight of them uh, uh, to start with. So everything doesn't make sense. You can see a clear pattern of uh, the UPND government using the police and the, uh, the DPP because they've planted cadres. They've got uh, an IG who is a cadre and uh, a director of public prosecutions who is a cadre. So they're using these cadres and their institutions to harass political opponents. And in the mind of President Hapeinde Chema, he believes that if he hijacks these state institutions, if he plants a cadre there, he puts a cadre IG, he puts a cadre DPP, then he will overcome all the political opponents. But it doesn't work like that. It failed under the PF administration, and it will definitely fail under President Hapeinde Chema. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Temple. Just uh, so you asked me at some point, you said to me, when was the air shortage? Mm -hmm. In 2020, mm -hmm. um, in some areas, there was an art there. I'm going to use the frame, I'm going to put it in inverted commas. There was an artificial shortage of minimum. Well, I'm putting it in, in, in inverted commas. This, this artificial shortage of uh, minimum caused uh, then uh, Lusaka Provincial Minister Boma Nusambu to go around in different stores to check and see what was going on and what was leading this so-called um, shortage of millimeter. I just thought well, I put that it must have, for you. It must have so lasted, it, it must have so lasted a few minutes. So that you know. It must have lasted a few minutes because I definitely never heard of it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for coming on the program today. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Thank and you. Uh, a very good morning to all the listeners out there. Okay. This has been Let the People Talk. Let the People Talk. Join us again every Tuesday and Fridays at 09 hours for now. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.